think he's strangely appealing, actually. I quite like it. It's, it's sort of, I don't know, it has this kind of sympathetically miserable face. I'm, I'm, I'm quite drawn to it. It's <laughs> kind of looked like I've been at work for blooming hours, I'm fed <laughs> up, and I'm not treated well. Maybe, yeah, maybe that's, maybe that's just me. I don't know. I, I, I maybe feel quite a, sorry for it. A motif for the people who work in the BBC. Could be, <laughs> could be yeah. I've okay, seen some faces like that in the news. Yeah, I'll, 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 I'll stay out of trouble. And, 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 and how... And how sort of threatened are the habitats where these creatures live? Well, each of these creatures has been... I mean, it's, it's a little bit of an arbitrary vote in a way because each of these creatures has been selected by a champion and this whole competition has been run by these campaign messages for each of these champions has posted an online video on YouTube and then the public have been asked to vote. And overwhelmingly, they voted for the blobfish, I think because of this surprisingly uh, where does miserable a blob, Where does a blobfish live? So it lives um, off the coast, in the deep waters off the coast of southeastern Australia and Tasmania. And like many of the creatures on this list, it's threatened by human activity. It lives at depths of about a kilometre, and it shares its habitat with lobsters and crabs that are fished. So it's often caught in bycatches. It's, it's quite a large, about a, a, a 30 centimetre long fish. So it's really easy to get caught up in nets and it can't escape. So it's never been filmed alive. It's got this gelatinous uh, substance for its flesh that's only slightly more dense than water, and it just bobs about at that depth, remaining kind of equally buoyant to the water. But that means it just gets caught up in these trawlers and bycatches. Have, we've never filmed one alive. Well, I couldn't find any footage of them alive, and I'm, I'm assured by a conservationist that they, they live at such sort of dark depths, and really are, are yeah. their bodies are sort of held together by the pressures at those depths that, they're, uh, that they've never been filmed alive. So we only have these rather miserable pictures of them uh, dead out of the water. OK, let's, go, let's, let's, let's bring up a runner-up here. What are, <laughs> what are we going to have? A water frog. Let's see a water frog. So oh. <laughs> this is a rather stretched image of the uh, Lake Titicaca water frog, um, as, as you said, um, sort of affectionately nicknamed the, the scrotum frog in the introduction. And the reason for that rather hideous nickname is because its skin has these very many folds in it. You'll see it's got all of this extra skin. And that's because it's an aquatic frog that spends its entire life underwater. It only lives in Lake Titicaca in the Andes at very, very high altitudes. And it has all of this extra skin to be able to breathe through so that it can exchange oxygen. And apparently it does press-ups at the bottom of Lake Titicaca to get the oxygen flow increased in the lake so that it can breathe even more through that incredible skin. Uh, this is... Well, OK, we're, we're on a roll now. OK, <laughs> monkey. Oh, no, the axolotl. What, now, what is yeah, that? Yeah, it's a lot. I, I don't it's, going, it's going to a fancy dress party. <laughs> It does look like feathers, doesn't it? So this is an incredible creature. This is a salamander. But unlike other salamanders, it doesn't change or metamorphosize into an adult ever in its life. It remains this perpetual juvenile. So it's sort of so known Peter as the Pan. Peter Pan. Exactly, of, uh, of salamanders. And um, it's, it's basically, it can regrow its limbs because it, it retains in this state of development throughout its entire life. It can regrow its limbs. So it's of huge interest to scientists as well. So in actual fact... It's not hugely threatened with total extinction, although it's very, very rare in the wild and, and occurs just in these very few water bodies. It's not actually threatened with total extinction because there are a lot of them in science labs throughout the world with scientists that are interested in ageing and anti-cancer properties. pig nose turtle, come on. There we are. <laughs> Click on my fingers. Did you see the power? That's power. <laughs> so smooth. Um, <laughs> this is an incredible creature. Again, lives off the coast of Australia and northern Australia in the more tropical areas this time. And that nose is not only a snorkel that allows it to just kind of poke its nose out of the water, avoiding predators but being able to breathe, but it's also filled with sensors, with sensory receptors, and that's why it's got such a big surface area and such a sort of unfortunate face, so that it can actually sense disturbances that let it know that predators are coming. Thank you.